Hello everyone and welcome to Science Talk with me, your host, Sally Science. I am so excited to be with you and oh my goodness, it's been a while, hasn't it? So much has happened and I want to start off by addressing what I know you're all thinking. Sally, where's your beautiful pink signature hair? And well, I have one word for you. Groupon. That's right, Groupon. I took a Groupon to get my hair done and well, it was a very bad idea and all I can tell you is we have a chemical reaction gone wrong. But not to worry, my pink hair will be returning and until then, well, we will just learn some science from this little mistake. I am kind of sad about it. <laughs> okay, in other words, I have someone to introduce you to today that I am so excited about. For the very first time, would you welcome my daughter, Susie Science. Susie, come on out, dear. Come on out. No, I'm not. Hi, my little love bucket. <laughs> Isn't she precious? Sunny, say hello to our friends. Hi, mommy. Yes, dear. Well, I kind of forgot my jacket, so I stole my CC's, Abby. So I'm just gonna... Oh, yes, let's just do that. Oh, no problem at all. Look what we can do. We'll just put that right over it. Perfect. And that perfect matches your hair, darling. Okay, thank you for being with us today. And we are going to start off with something very simple on this first episode of Science Talk. We are going to talk about matter. Do you know what matter is, Susie? I think so. Tell me what you think. I think that matter is anything that takes up space. That is partially right. Matter is anything that takes up space, and another word for that is volume. So anything that takes up space and has a mass, which means it has to have some heaviness to it and take up space. So, are these scissors matter? Yes. Yes, they take up space right here. And they're heavy. Where, and they have some heaviness to them, some mass. So wherever these scissors are, nothing else can be. Susie, I want you to try to put your hand exactly where the scissors are. You can't. It's impossible. Because they're taking up that space. So let me ask you this. Is this index card matter? Yes. Yes, it is. So let me ask you another question, my little dear. Can you think of anything that might not be matter? So anything that doesn't both take up space and have a mass or some heaviness to it? Hmm. What about love? Love, kindness, gratefulness, thankfulness, the fruits of the spirit. The fruits of, that's right. Those are emotions and those are not matter. But pretty much everything else is matter. Even air? Even air. Wow. So for instance, if my hand is in the air right here, then there's no air in the exact spot my hand is. There's air below it, above it, beside it, beside it. But no air exactly where my hand is. Okay, so. Now, we are gonna come back and talk about so many things in the coming episodes, but let's just skip right on to the three forms of matter. Susie, do you know the three forms of matter? Is it solid, liquid, and gas? That is correct, solid, liquid, and gas. So I'm just gonna do a quick little demo for us. Okay, so, one. oh, you can't just. So, camera, if you'll come a little closer. So if the molecules, which is what all forms of matter are made of, are really tightly packed together like those Skittles, you can't even tell they're moving. They're really just kind of vibrating in place, kind of like this. Just barely jumping in place. That's what the molecules of a solid look like. So for instance, this mirror right here. The, it's made of molecules, but you can't really tell that they're moving because it's a solid. So the solid has a definite shape and a definite volume. No matter where I sit this mirror, it's got the same shape and same volume. Now, let's talk about a liquid. If these molecules were in a liquid, they might be doing this. So they're moving around a lot, but you know, they're kind of still staying together because the molecules of a liquid have a definite volume, meaning they take up the same amount of space no matter where they are, but they change shape depending on their container. So that is the molecules of a liquid. Now the molecules of a gas are different. Have you ever noticed, Susie, that when someone has a little tutor that you can smell it all the way across the classroom? Ooh, ooh. 
You know, I always say, boys and girls, if you have a little tutor in class, you go ahead and claim that, okay? You should be proud of it because everyone has to release a little gas every now and then. But here is why a friend on the other side of the room can smell your tutor. Why? Because the molecules of the gas do this. And really, even more than that, they have no shape, definite shape, and no definite volume. They can go wherever they want. Kind of like that. Ah! That's right. And That's what a gas does. But a gas is not just the tutors that come out of your body. There's lots of kinds of gas. Can you think of another gas? Mm. What about gasoline? That's another kind of gas. Exactly. What about helium that's in a balloon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another kind of gas. So a gas can just fill the air. It can, it can take the shape of wherever it is, and it can spread out really, really far. Okay, so, you know, I was thinking what would be fun is to go ahead and try a couple of little changes with some matter. What do you think? Sure. Okay, so, and we're going to keep reviewing these things in the coming days, don't worry, but I want to get them some experiments that you, kiddos, can do at home. So, I have an index card here. Can you see it? And it is not that big, really. And my little darling Susie, I'd like for you to put your entire head through this index card. Oh, oh, but wait. It has to stay connected. I'm sure I can do it. I have a very small head. Let's see, can I take these to do Oh, no, mm -mm, no, just try to put your head through it. Your little tiny head. Oh, that's not working. Okay, let me try for you. Here we go, ready and... No, nope, still didn't work. Oh my goodness. Okay, so would you like me to show you how to do it? Can I try? Well, if you're at home, I'm going to show you and my little darling Susie how to do this. Wait, I know how and to do you can trick your parents. I okay, okay, I'll let you try. I'll let you try. Okay, let's see if you can do it. So, I still have a very small head for this. Oh. Now, remember, the key is not to lose any of the matter. Oops. Oops. Look at my head for the I guess. Mm. But did my little sweet girl follow directions? No. no. That's okay. Let me show you at home, kids, how you can fool your parents and siblings. Susie, you want to learn? Yes. Okay. First, you're going to take an index card. Or really, any piece of paper will work. Any construction like paper, you? regular paper, any paper. You know what? Next time, we'll bring two pairs of scissors, and you can do that. Why didn't we think of that? I don't know. Do you want to go get a pair? Yeah. Go get a pair and come back. So while she's going to get a pair of scissors, I'm going to show you how to fold this. I like to fold it like a hamburger. So you know, this is a hot dog fold, and this is a hamburger fold. I like to fold it like this, but either way is fine. Again, you can use construction paper, notebook paper, computer paper, card stock, index card, not toilet paper, because we are very short on that these days, but pretty much any kind of paper. Okay. Now, you're going to take your index card once you have it folded. I'm going to go ahead and fold Susie's for her so when she gets back out, she's ready to rock and roll. And then all you need is some scissors. So here's what you're going to say to your parents or your sibling. You're going to say, can you put your head through this index card without losing any parts of it? So here's what I mean. Susie cut this part out so she didn't fast the test. So I've somehow got to fit my head and Susie's head. I didn't find scissors, but I can tell you, as equal importance. She found peeps. Those are equally important. Yeah. Okay, so, so since Susie couldn't find any scissors, we'll just do it together, okay? Yeah. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna make some, you're gonna start with the folded end and you're gonna make some cuts. Just, you know, every few centimeters apart. And you're not gonna cut quite to the bottom. And it doesn't matter if they're all the same length or not. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it over so that I have the open end facing me. And I'm gonna make cuts between the other cuts. And you know what? I am not doing this perfectly, and that's okay. Now I want you to notice, I'm not gonna cut either end. I could, but I'm not going to. Now watch what I'm gonna do. Step three is I'm gonna take my scissors and where all of these little guys here are connected, I'm gonna cut them apart. So 
So I'm gonna cut that one apart. One, right? But not the first one and not the last one. So this is the way you ensure that your matter stays connected. So when we change matter and don't get anything new, but just make it look a little different, Susie, do you know what kind of change that's called? We're gonna do a lot of these in the coming days. Chemical change? Nope, in a chemical change, you get something new. An example of a chemical change is this. Not good, I got something new. My beautiful pink hair was exchanged for this aerial looking hair. I got it, physical change. It's a physical change. So here's how I know. It's gonna look a little different, but nothing new is formed. Okay, Susie, let's see if your head can now go through this index card. What do you guys think? I think so. There we go. It's my new now, necklace. Now, if you use a large piece of paper, you can actually put your entire body through it. You can put your entire body through this. And let's see, if you step through it? Yeah. Maybe, maybe you could. You can. You think so? Yeah. You wanna show you? Show me, of course. Be careful taking it off though. Oh, 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 she's gonna shimmy through it with her cute little spell. There we go, there we go, there we go. All the way down, all the way down. I'm so proud of you. Mommy, I love you. I love you. Okay, now, so we've learned that cutting produces physical changes. It's going to look a little different. Oh, where'd it go? Can you grab that for me? Yeah. Ooh. Our cut index card. Don't worry, I've got you. I've got you. I've got you. you sure? No, I'm not sure. Yeah, you sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Ah. It's going to look a little different. But oh, 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 where'd it go? I'm so proud. Oh, no, you're not. You're just perfect, just like your mother. Okay, it's going to look a little different, but... Oh, we just, I just tore it. It's going to look a little different, but nothing new is really formed. There's nothing new here. It's still an index card. It just looks a little different. Okay, so we learned that cutting is an example of a physical change. So I'd like to cut something else right now. What? When I was a little girl, my precious one, I didn't go to a hairdresser. My mom cut my hair. <laughs> So I was thinking, you need a little bit of a bang trim. So I think I'm gonna give my little girl a bang trim. Now I want you to remember, if nothing new is formed, it's simply a, what kind of change? Physical. Physical change. So Susie, are you ready to have your very own physical change? I guess so. Okay, here we go. Now, here's what we're gonna do. Oh, you are just so adorable. I wanna tell you, much like her mother, whose hair grows right out of my head pink, Susie's hair grows straight out of her head blue. Isn't that interesting and amazing? Okay, camera, camera sweet girl, hold that camera still for us. Okay, Susie, now I want to tell you that I do have some experience in cosmetology, and that is the art of hair and makeup. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my kitchen scissors here to give you a little bang trim. Let's see. Oh, you look adorable. concludes our very first edition of Science Talk with Sally and Susie Science. We hope you'll join us next time for our makeover edition where we will learn more about physical changes. Mommy? Yes? Can I teach you something? Sure. Stay here for one minute, please. Oh, I forgot about the piece. Here we go. Let's open those up. I'm going to teach you. This is my turn. Wait, sure. so, Susie, are you going to teach us a physical change? Yeah. Okay. Go so. ahead. Got a peep. Mm. Physical change. So if you want to make a physical change, that's a joke, right? Well, as long as we can get that back out of her mouth, it's a physical change. Once it goes into the belly, oh, look at that. <laughs> Once it goes into the belly, it's then a chemical change. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. And we're so happy you joined us. And we'll hope you'll join us next time for Science Talk with Sally and Susie Science. Bye.